Welcome to Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. Now let's join Pastor Cowan and the congregation of Faith is the Victory Church. This is Victorious Living. For to be carnally minded is dead. You hear people say, well, I'm, I'm believing God, but you know, I don't know. He ain't done nothing yet. He hasn't answered my prayer yet. You see, they, they pray a prayer, they ask God for something, and then immediately turn around and talk negative about it. Right. Not you. <laughs> Not necessarily us. But yet it, it's, it's pretty common among people who know the Lord is their Redeemer and Savior. That's not to say when you think on things uh, like this that you're not born again. It just simply says that you're speaking death over your life. That's what you're doing. Amen. Well, no, I'm just, no, Brother Charles, I just, I just believe in speaking the truth. So they're telling me that what they're believing is truth, but contrary to the word. And so I cannot tell you, if, I, if I'm speaking contrary to the word, I can't tell you that I'm believing. Amen. I can tell you that I'm not, not believing, but I can't tell you that I'm really exerting my faith for whatever it is going on in my life. And so carnal is to be under the influences of one's flesh nature. Amen. Amen. We so often use the phrase, now I mentioned this a moment ago, take care, and we mean for the person to stay safe or unharmed. This is one of the, of the main weapons that Satan uses is fear, trying to frighten us into a troubled state of mind and causing us to take on worry and anxiety and fear and all the other words that are attached with it. Listen to me just for a moment here, that when that's happening in my life, faith has walked out of the door. Amen. I am absolutely opening a door for faith to leave and doubt and unbelief to come in. Amen. And so faith is a power. Yes. Faith, faith has a power. It has an inherent power. Faith, and, and we, you prove this through the scripture, how many of you believe that God created the heavens and the earth by faith? Amen. Amen. So what did he do then for Moses and the children of Israel when they got down to the Red, to the Red Sea? He spoke. He told Moses what to do. How, how many of you, well, we all have. How many of us have read in Genesis there in, in, in talking about the story of creation and 19 times in the book of Genesis, it, it goes like that. And God said, and God said, and God said, and God said. And every time God said, something happened. Amen. Something creative and it was good happened. Yeah. And God said, and God said, and God said. When he, when, when he spoke those words, they were faith-filled words. Amen. They were words with inherent power in them and there it had creative power in them. So every time God spoke, something had to happen. Amen. So that's where he wants us to be as children of God, that we have the faith of God, you know. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. But having the faith of God, you know, and that's what the Bible teaches us, have the faith of God. Of God, it does say that in Mark. It says, "Have faith." But if you'll study it out, it's telling us have the faith of God. Well, you can't have God's faith and not speak His word. Amen. You can't have faith without believing His word. You can't have faith without doing His word. So you don't want to say, "I have faith in God," and do the opposite of what he has said, told us to do. So people, sometimes they, they may not think like that, but yet at the same time, that is, a, that is something that's happening in their life. And so 
We do, we do use that fear. So one of the main weapons that Satan uses in, is fear, trying to frighten us into a troubled state of mind by taking on worry and anxiety. And every person sitting in this house today that when you're facing something that, that you're working toward, what's Satan gonna tell you? He gonna tell you, you can't get there. He gonna tell you, you can't do that. He's gonna tell you, that won't work. He's going to bring all of the negativity. Where's he, what's he trying to do? He's trying to get it into your mind. Amen. And so what do we do when it, when, it, when it gets into our mind to such a degree that it's rolling over in our mind, then I, we do like a, a person told me not long ago. He said, Brother Charles, you know it's hard to read the Word of God. He said, every time I pick up the Bible to read, he said, I just can't concentrate on it. Well, what's going on? What's going on is something negative that his mind is filled with. Amen. And so, hey, but there's a remedy for it. Yes, it is. It's not a death sentence. Yes, there's a remedy for it. Amen. There is a way out yes. if we'll take it. Amen. Amen. You know, God in his word, if you'll find it, that God has opened a door. Yes. He's opened a door. And, and behind or beyond that door, he's got all of the promises waiting. Amen. But he, he opened, he put a door of promise in front of us. Talks about the promises of God in the Bible. He put that door in front of us, but guess what? I can't get to the promise until I walk through the door. Amen. So it's in your house. You, you, you can't get to the living room you know, if you park your car in the garage, you can't get to the living room without walking through the garage. Amen. You got to walk through the door. Yeah. You, you got you to gotta walk through the door of opportunity that God has placed there for your life. He has done it. He is responsible for it, but I'm responsible to walk through the door. What is the door that I am to walk through? It is the door of faith. Amen. It's the door of believing it's the door of surety. It's the door of being convinced. It's the door of being convicted that when I walk through that door, I'm going to find everything God has placed out there beyond that door. God, I think I preached on this here the other day. God's got a table sitting on the other side of the door. It's got everything that God promised to us sitting on the table. On that table, it's beyond the door. Yeah. Everything God has done for us, it's on that table. Yeah. And you know, but God opened the door and said, all of this is yours, but you got to walk through the door Amen. To, in order to get to it. Well, faith is the door. Amen. Faith is the door that we walk through to get to what God has made available to us. These things that brings care are faith robbers. Amen. They are mask faith robbers because Satan masks to our mind what he's, what he's saying, causing us to doubt what God says. But when I walk through that door, he tells me there's a table sitting up there on the other side of that door and it's, there's peace there's care out there that he has for me. When I say care, by supplying every need. Yeah. Sitting on the table. Amen. It's every need met. Right. Sitting on the table. Yeah. Sounds like a song, don't it? Amen. Sitting on the table is everything I need, everything you need. Well, Brother Charles, would you just pray for me that I can get it? I can't pray that you'll get it because God told you how to get it. Amen. Amen. And how can I pray and my prayer be effective if you know how to get it, but you don't go through the door to get it. Amen. So my prayer would just be a bunch of words, but it would have no oomph to it. Amen. It would have no power involved in it. It's only when I walk by faith. Okay, it, everything around me looks negative. Everything I hear may be, uh, boy, 85, 90% negative, but I see a door. And I see a door that's got up above the door. It says, faith room. Yeah. And he says, use your faith and unlock this door. On, I walk through that door by faith. Yeah. We walk by faith and not by sight. Yeah. 
Amen. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. So if he said it before me, opened the door to it and said, come on in and get it, I got to walk through that door of faith. I got to exercise faith in my life. I can't talk about what I don't have when I got sitting before me what I do have. I just got to walk through the door. <coughs> got to go through the door. And once, you, that, once that door, you walk through that door, you can sit down at the table and dine. You all, how many of you are in here old hymn folks? H-Y-M, not, okay. Uh, what, is that, what, is it, what is one of them old songs we used to sing? What? Look at that. See, you, you just dated yourself right there. Amen. Come and dine. And we just sing it with all the volume that we can. Come and dine. The master call it. Come and dine. What's the rest of it? You can feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed the multitude turned the water into wine. To the hungry, what? To the hungry, what? Calleth now, come and dine. So you see, what does he say? Come. You come. I got the table set for you, but you come. You come. You come through that door, and he's got the table set. Amen. You get, you get to preach on the table, you don't go nowhere else here. God has set a table. And that list, what else it said? It said, God has set the table for us in the presence of our enemies. So when Satan's trying to talk to me, I got a table. I got a table with peace on it. I've got a table where there's no concern about my life and future. I got a table with all of that sitting on the table. Hallelujah. Everybody say, I got a table. Everything I'll ever need is on that table. Amen. But what have I got to do? I got to walk through the door of faith. Amen. Amen. So once we understand that God is just not heaping these things on us, he's telling them, I've got it for you, but it's on the table. Come and get it. Yeah. You know, it's just like I say, what are you having for lunch? I'm having T-bone. I'm having a filet mignon. <laughs> uh, amen. And, and you talk about what you're going to have for lunch. But I guarantee if you ain't got one at the house to grill, you're going to walk through some door to get your filet mignon. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Well, God's got a table filled with filet mignon. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you, when I come to God's table, I say, I've come to get my filet mignon. And he's got it on. He's got porterhouse. Yeah, you got porterhouse on the table. Yeah. Hey, you got pork chops on the table. Yeah. If you need it and want it, God's got it on the table for you. Yes, yeah. Amen. Well, I want it, but I just don't want to walk to get it. Well, you won't get it. <laughs> Boy, have I been there. Yeah, I have. I've been there. And so I found out that faith, faith is what I walk through that door with. I don't walk through there. I'm not to walk through there being negative. Well, what if I get there and ain't none on the table? Oh, you'll never catch God's table empty. I mean, they may come in there and take away 40 or 50 filet mignon. Amen. But God's got a locker, cooler or something, and he'll just replace it with more than one. Amen. We sing the song. He fed the multitude. He turned the water into wine. To the hungry call us, come and dine. Amen. So if you're worried this morning, if you're <laughs> full of care this morning, you're concerned about something this morning, that's the reign of heaven. He's telling me, go ahead, Brother Charles, I'm pleased. So what do we do? We fill our hearts, our minds from God's table. Amen. And what does that do when, when my mind is filled with God's table? Things off of God's table, then worry can't squeeze in. Amen. Concern can't squeeze in. Amen. And all of the different things, fear can't squeeze in. Amen. Amen. Why? Because all of, all of these things are fear blockers. Right. Or faith blockers, I'm sorry. Faith blockers when you're letting that happen in your life. Now, some people, you know, they have so 
entrench that negativity into their life, they'll almost want to fight you if you tell them different. And so that's what Satan's trying to get us to do. All right, now let's go to 1 Peter 5, verses 6 and 7. Humble yourselves. Doesn't say anything there about God humbling you. It says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Amen. Doing what? What are, what are we to do to come to that point? Look what it says. I know you know this. this is in the Bible, and I understand that we all have heard it. But what does he say? That God may exalt you in due time. Verse 7, what? Casting, throwing Casting all of your care, where? Up on him. Well, if he's got all your care, then you ain't got none. You don't have any if he's got it all. But he's got a little bit of it, and we got a whole lot of it sometimes. But listen to what he says. Are y'all still with me? Now that's, that was eight. I counted eight. All right. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand. What does that say? Whatever situation I'm in, the mighty hand of God will take care of it for me. Amen. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Why? God's got something that he wants to give you, Amen. that he may or do for you. What does it say? That he may what? That he may exalt, lift you up. That he may exalt you in due time. Verse 7, what? Casting all of your care upon him. Why should I do that? Because God cares for you. God loves you. Everybody say, God loves me. God cares for me. God has provided for me. And God wants me to come to the table. Hallelujah. Because he got some good things on the table. Hallelujah. Amen. If he can turn water to wine, that's a great thing, huh? That's really a great thing. I heard a preacher say one time, what, 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 what we need to pray is, oh God, turn the wine back to water. Amen. You'll get that on the way home. Okay. Now, let me read to you out of the Amplified. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. This is Amplified. Therefore, humble yourselves, demote, lower yourselves in your own estimation. We never should think less of ourselves than we should. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. Never think less of yourself than you should, but never think more of yourself than you should. Think about God. Amen. So the Amplified says, therefore humble yourselves, demote, Lord, yourselves in your own estimation under the mighty hand of God, the almighty God, the all-powerful God, the all wise in God, humble yourself. And you know what that means? That means submission. Amen. You know, probably sometimes people have a problem with submission. Amen. I'm talking about submission to God. Yeah. And then other areas in the scriptures that it talks about submission. So, therefore, humble yourselves, demote, lower yourselves in your own estimation under the mighty hand of God. Let me stop right there and say, we are what we are by the grace of God. I am what I am. The great apostle Paul said, he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. Hallelujah. I'm nothing more and I'm nothing less. I am what I am by the grace of God. Hallelujah. So, you know, we owe grace a debt of our faith. We're saved by grace through faith and that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God. I owe the grace of God doing something for me. Grace did that I could not do for myself. Right. Jesus bore it all. Amen. All to him I owe. Yes. Amen. But I owe this faith that the Bible talks to me about. I owe that debt of faith to God's grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we know this, that we are what we are by the grace of God. I'm nothing less, you're nothing less, I'm nothing more, and you're nothing more than what God has made you to be. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Can you say amen to that? I am what I am. 
I'm saved by grace, been delivered by grace. I'm living by grace. And in that grace, with faith in that grace, God's doing for me what I cannot do for myself. Hallelujah. And when God's doing something for you that you can't do for yourself, he'll find somebody that'll get to you and there God will bless you. Amen. Amen. So thank God for this kind of faith that we cast all of our care on him. Amen. And uh, let me re finish reading the rest of this. Therefore, humble yourselves, demote or lower yourselves in your own estimation under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you. Verse seven, cast in the whole, W-H-O-L-E, cast in the whole of your care. It means no more worry. No more concern. Now, you know, Brother Charles, you've got to worry just a little bit going through this life. Well, I don't know about that. That's not much what that says. It says, cast in, cast in the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all on him, for he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. Folks, there, it's, I mean, how, how can it be any plainer than that right there? Okay, we're going to wrap it up in Psalm 55, verse 22. Look what it says, Psalm 55, 22. Is that up before? There we go. That's not it. Am I reading it right? King James Version. Anyway, this is what it says. Psalm 55, 22. I don't think that's it either. Casting your burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain you. Cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. But what, 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 what is the uh, forerunner of that? Cast your burden on the Lord. When I do that, he will sustain me. Amen. And listen, what else? He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Can you believe that? Amen. Or do you not believe that? It's one of the two. Amen. One of the two. So the first step in dealing with the cares of life is to realize that there are some things in life that you can't handle by yourself. And your brother or sister can't handle it for you. That's right. There are certain things that are not designed, that we are not designed to handle because they create an overload when we try to handle them by ourselves. We, in the natural, we'll, we will blow a fuse. You know, well, we don't use fuses anymore. This day and time, we use circuit breakers. Have you ever noticed in your home when a circuit breaker trips, that cuts off the power from some, or something in your home. If you, leave that, if you leave that breaker off, you're not gonna be able to use what's connected to that circuit. Maybe it's your refrigerator. You hear what I'm saying? It may be uh, that your lights won't work, the refrigerator won't work, the electric stove won't work, the microwave won't work, the TV does nothing, uh, it won't work, the power, why? Because the power has been connected, disconnected from your house. And so when we walk in things that are contrary to what God has said, we disconnect from the power. I mean, there's a disconnect that occurs. It's, it's like a circuit breaker has been tripped and the power is cut off and the power no longer flows from God through or to or through us to do what it is that we are asking him to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. So dealing with the cares of life and folks, I don't know how far you travel. I don't know how many people you talk to. I don't know that. And uh, you know, it's not that I need to know that. But one thing I do to know, you can't have a strong faith running around with negative people. Amen. You can't, it just won't work. And uh, you know, sometimes you can find negative people sitting in your church. Amen. Sometimes you can find negative people. Don't run, you know, don't run with negative people because they're, they're going to sap all of the faith that you have. They're going to sap that out of you 
Amen. Praise God. All right. How many of you believe that today? We should cast all of our care on him. I got through the first page and I'm real proud of myself. Amen. (laughs) Thank you so much for viewing our program with us today. I appreciate you taking your time to just listen and to watch what we are saying. We're talking about how to deal with the cares of life. You know, cares are something that is common Uh, to all of us in the sense of we have opportunity to care. We have opportunity to worry. We have opportunity to fret about our situations and our circumstances and all of the other things that pertains to our life. And you know, the adversary Satan seeking to get our mind into the mode of worry and of taking on care. And really there's nothing that that will produce for our life. And it's just words that we're speaking out here. But remember this, they are words that the adversary is hearing. So dealing with the cares of life has to start with what you're saying and who God that you are praising and that you're giving thanks to you, to him and that you are standing firm upon the word against those worrisome thoughts, fretful thoughts, uh, and taking care, C-A-R-E, taking care or worry about those things that God has said, cast all of them, cast all of your care over on him and then praise him that he's working to bring about a a victory, uh, uh, whatever the cares may be. So God bless you. Thank you so much for being there and taking time to listen to us and watch us. We really greatly appreciate that. And if you don't have a home church here in Nashville, Tennessee, then you're looking for one. Then we just extend to you a warm invitation to come and and just see how you like us, just to see uh, what we're about. And uh, then uh, you can just follow the Spirit of God where He would have you to go and to be. So God bless you. Thanks again. And we'll see you next time right here on Victorious Living from Faith is a Victory Church, Nashville, Tennessee. You've been watching Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. It's our hope that today's message has ministered to the need you have in your life. If you would like to receive today's message in its entirety, please call 1-800-842-7896. Or if you're in the Nashville area, call 615-226-2145 and ask for the product number on the screen. Visit us online at victoriousliving.org. If you're ever in the Nashville area, come and worship with us. Sundays at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. From Pastor Cowan and the Congregation of Faith is the Victory Church, we'll be looking for you next time right here on Victorious Living.